Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem and invocation. Color Guard, parade the colors. Retire the colors. Chaplain Geralmo, Commander, United States Navy, will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. We thank you for the privilege of celebrating the commencement of these men and women today as they graduate from the Naval Postgraduate School. You have sustained them over the course of their rigorous studies. The multiplicity of methods you have employed to impart knowledge, as well as the mentorship opportunities given to them through their faculty and advisors. For some, their time here at NPS has been challenging, personally and or professionally. For others, this has been a welcome break from the demanding op-tempo. However, by your grace, they are all here ready to enjoy the fruit of their labor. 
So now as they prepare to receive their rightful diplomas and take on what lies ahead in their new jobs, whether in CONUS or abroad, I ask that you would graciously bless them and keep them. As you have strengthened them for the challenges here, give them assurance that you will do the same in the days ahead. For some of us who remain and carry on the work here at NPS, give us grace to follow the example they have set by continuing to pursue excellence in every endeavor. We honor them and their milestone today and praise you for the opportunity of this treasured time together. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Naval Postgraduate School's summer quarter graduation. The men and women sharing the stage with President Rondeau and Provost Lehrman are the deans of our various schools, distinguished professors, U.S. government officials, and our local area military leadership. They have all been deeply involved in the education of today's graduates. I am honored to introduce our president, Vice Admiral Anne Rondeau, United States Navy, retired. Good morning. Distinguished guests, faculty, staff, family, friends, and soon to be graduates, good morning and welcome to our summer quarter graduation ceremony. This event is a celebration of individual commitment, perseverance, and personal accomplishment. We're here today, along with family and friends, to express our pride in our students' academic uh, achievements. First, though, we also need to express our gratitude and acknowledge the faculty and staff, both military and civilian, who work so hard and diligently to achieve the challenging learning environment that provides our students with such a prestigious and relevant education. Second, I would like to thank all the family members and friends who are here, who are here for our graduates who have been so patient and encouraging and enforcing with, our, with your loved ones through long hours of studying in pursuit of academic goals. As the chaplain has said, not only is there a time here to though do those academic uh, achievements and work, it's also about being with family and friends and a time to think and reflect. Your support in that effort is critical to these graduates being here this morning. I would also like to recognize and thank our Naval Postgraduate School Foundation for the continued support of our institution in providing us with a margin of excellence that is so important to our success and our students' experiences here. Finally, thank you to, to Commander Ferguson and the Dean of, of Student Staff and everyone who worked so hard to not only put this event together, but to support our students. And a special thanks to our volunteer musicians in, in, the, in the Del Monte Brass. And if, he, and if he were not up here, our provost would be down there playing his clarinet. <laughs> it's a great, great volunteer organization and contribution to everything that we do here. So please join me in welcoming our, our guest and in thanking the Demoni Brass. So today, we do gratefully acknowledge the faculty and staff whose dedication to each student has made this graduation um, possible. Everybody here should know that this is a world-class institution with a pedigreed faculty that is quite remarkable in the life of higher education in, in this nation. And we want to be sure that they are recognized for everything that they do to uh, support the mission here. To our graduates, we are so proud of your success. Your success is our, is our satisfaction. We have immersed you in an extremely competitive academic environment that has enabled you to focus on the challenges that affect your services, your mission, 
your contribution, our defense capabilities, and our national security. It's our commitment to you, and, and it is our commitment to NPS education that we want to provide you the foundation for further success in your career and your lifelong learning. On behalf, on behalf of all of us at NPS, congratulations. You see in your, in your program the biography of our guest speaker. Biographies in programs tell us much. What they can't tell us is the spirit and the character of that leader and the way that he or, or she leads. Our guest speaker is a leader who we're very, very fortunate to have in the middle of the fight that we're in. Vice Admiral Tim Shemansky has, has led the Special Operations Forces. He's led Navy Special Operations Forces, but he's also led our Navy and our Joint Forces in thinking, acting, doing, and, and truly delivering for mission and, and for the nation and the globe. So without further ado, uh, please join me in a very warm welcome to Deputy Commander, U.S. Special Operations Command, Vice Admiral Shemansky. Thank you. Thank you. Um, don't let this stage prop fool you. Uh, some of you might, and probably the computer science folks go, wow, he's a really hip dude. Uh, you know, he's got a tablet up there. Um, my wife, I carry an I, uh, iPhone 4. I don't think the operating system actually even works. Uh, so uh, th it's a funny story because my commo came out with my Nipper computer, uh, our unclassified computer, and I, where I was going to type up my remarks because uh, I've been procrastinating all week about the, for some other things to do, but I've been procrastinating all week on, on my remarks. And so last night trying to listen to the Eagles game and uh, fly out here on the, the reverse red eye and uh, a legal pad and some, some airplane bar napkins uh, making some notes uh, to, to speak this morning. But uh, so I, here we go. All right. Good morning, Admiral Renault, Rondeau, Naval Post Grad School faculty and staff, Provost Lemon. Most of all, to the families and friends of the student body and to the student body and the soon-to-be graduates of this esteemed institution of higher learning and applied research. I reviewed the demographics of this graduating class in the MPS fact sheet. The enrollment, graduate schools, professional development programs, research, and the credentials and tenure of the faculty and staff are quite impressive. The mission statement says that Naval Postgrad School programs are inherently joint, interagency, and international. And that is apparent in this class with all of the Department of Defense, uniformed services, DOD civilians, interagency participants in the international student body. Our DOD civilians and international partners are an integral component to our combined joint force. It is great to see the investment the Department of Defense and our partner nation's services are putting into the total joint force. I'm honored to be here this morning to share in this tremendous accomplishment as you will be awarded your hard-earned graduate degrees. I'm also humbled and a little bit intimidated by trying to say something meaningful to over 200 graduates of very high intellect who have honed their analytical, critical thinking skills over the, eight, the last 18 months. How do I spar with that? I'd like to establish my own academic credentials by telling you that I graduated in the top third of the bottom half of my undergraduate <laughs> class. I know you can do the math. What has the Naval Postgraduate School taught you throughout the curriculum or provided you in implied research? I think this incredible faculty helped you develop the most important skill that will serve you best as you return to your services and parent organizations, and that is not what to think, but how to think. And I think one of the elements of critical thinking is thinking differently. 
and challenging your assumptions and theses. You may not immediately realize your new superpowers. You may not realize that they are work and you, when you return to the DOD workforce, but know that they are. I'd like to take a small excursion on thinking differently. The National Defense Strategy demands that we think differently. You have studied and discussed the National Defense Strategy here at the post-grad school, as it had only been recently published at the beginning of your academic journey here. It's simply and concisely written, but deeply powerful in its charge. You are keenly aware of its three lines of efforts, lethality, partners and alliances, and reform. Albeit, its power is in its characterization and description of the strategic environment. It describes the operational and informational environment, the pace of change in commercial and disruptive technologies, and the changing nature of warfare. It demands us to think differently about the challenges we will face today and tomorrow across the spectrum of cooperation, competition, and conflict. And although you don't need it because you are graduating, you will get extra credit if you use the word urgent or urgently, urgently when interacting with the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Richard Spencer. One of the key conclusions is that in facing these challenges, it will require us to think, compete, and fight transregionally and simultaneously in multi-domains multi and dimensions. While you have been working on your degrees and learning to think differently, the services have been analyzing and trying to think differently about this transregional, multi-domain, multi-dimensional challenge and have developed globally integrated operating concepts. You have probably been studying and following them here. The Navy has distributed maritime operations. The Marine Corps has expeditionary advanced based operations. The Army has multi-domain operations. And I forget the exact terminology of the Air Force, but it's something like fight in and fight out. And SOCOM has the integrated global special operations. The names are not all that important, but the key common enabling element required for these concepts to be successful is the speed, accuracy, and clarity of processing data to decide. Those that are wedded to doctrine have termed it decision dominance. The previous CNO, Admiral Richardson, described it using Boyd's OODA loop, proposing that those who could orient and decide faster would prevail. Because humans decide and show judgment. The comparative advantage in all the service concepts is, is their people. Humans, our people, are our comparative advantage. Human, however, Human advantage can atrophy or decay, or competitors can catch up. If we don't evolve, adapt, and hone our people to intellectually and cognitively keep pace with the speed of technological change and the changing nature of warfare. So these service concepts are dependent on programs and methods to develop their people in thinking differently, and accelerating learning in 21st century skills, knowledge, and competencies like space, cyber, information, influence, decision science, data analytics, algorithmic warfare, and so on. The Navy's approach is high velocity learning and ready relevant learning. And here at Naval Post Grad School is where DOD has invested in its comparative advantage. It has invested in you. I was asked to talk about leadership and I went long on the excursion of thinking differently, so I'll try to be brief and close thematically on thought leadership. You are thought leaders, and your organizations will directly and indirectly lean on you for that leadership. As the services are thinking differently about our national security challenges, there has also been some critical thinking applied on the traditional school of, th school of thought on leadership. In General Stan McChrystal's newest book, Leaders, Myth and Reality, General McChrystal's thesis is that leadership is a complex system of relationships between leaders and followers in a particular context that provides meaning to its members. If you ascribe to lifelong learning and refining thinking to a more complex understanding of leadership like General McChrystal has proposed, and I do, then we may have to provide some critical thought to its tenet of providing meaning to its members. To me, it's about two things. First, it's about making a difference to the relationships between leaders and followers. Not necessarily a result or an outcome, 
but just a positive difference. And second, it's about inspiring others to make a difference. In closing, in the story of the Wizard of Oz, the Scarecrow is on a journey in a quest to acquire a brain. But in the end, the wizard awards him a diploma. So as you walk across the podium and receive your diploma, realize that this incredible institution, demanding curriculum and fantastic faculty have further revealed what you have always had, critical thinking. You are thought leaders and your organizations and people will rely on that leadership. Unleash your superpowers for good. Make a difference in your organization, your team, and your relationships. And more importantly and more rewarding, inspire others to make a difference. I know we're streaming, and I forgot to, to uh, recognize the families and friends uh, out there virtually, but I know your friends and families are proud of you. The MPS faculty and staff are proud of you, and I am proud of you. Congratulations on this tremendous accomplishment. Thank you for your service, and thank you for your family's support and sacrifices along the way. God bless you. May God bless this institution and this great nation. Thank you. I invite President Rondeau, Provost Lehrman, and Vice Admiral Szymanski forward for presentation of the Distinguished Professor Award, conferring of the PhDs and graduate candidates. President Rondeau, Provost Lehrman, and Vice Admiral Szymanski will now present the Distinguished Professor Awards. Will the recipient of the Distinguished Professor Award please stand and proceed to the platform. It is my honor to announce the next two professors who have been recognized by their colleagues as distinguished professors. A distinguished professor here at MPS is a senior role model among their colleagues. A distinguished professor has given continued effective service to the Naval Postgraduate School and has conducted work that has had significant impact on the candidate's field. This year's first recipient is Professor Oleg A. Yakomenko from the Department of Systems Engineering. Professor Yakomenko has an outstanding academic record comprising sustained high quality and balanced contributions to instruction, research, and service. Throughout his professional career, he has taught 24 different courses in his areas of expertise. Among his former masters and PhD students are two Russian cosmonauts, test directors at the Mikoyan Aircraft Design Bureau, Boeing Aircraft, U.S. Army Yuma Proving Ground, and the United States Air Force Space Command, and professors at MPS, the U.S. Naval Academy, and several other distinguished universities. Dr. Yakomenko's scientific contributions have include pioneering and in novel research in modeling, guidance, dynamics, navigation, control, flight testing of different weapon systems and unmanned systems. His algorithms have been flight tested and implemented on several fielded systems, including fighter jet aircraft, aerial delivery systems, and maneuverable satellites. He's the author and co-author of over 300 publications, which include 16 books and book chapters, 87 journal papers, and he holds 12 patents. He has provided and continues to provide outstanding service to NPS and a broader community, assisting local, regional, national, and worldwide organizations. Throughout his 33-year career, he has demonstrated the highest standards of character, academic integrity, and leadership. This year's second recipient is Professor Philip E. Pace from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Due to a long-standing commitment for out-of-country travel, Dr. Pace is unable to attend today's graduation ceremony. He'll be recognized at the fall graduation on December 20th. Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy please stand and proceed to the platform?
Will Navy Commander Peter Harley from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, the candidate for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical Engineering, please cross the stage. The title of Commander Harley's dissertation is Error Correction Code-Based Embedding in Adaptive Rate Wireless Communication Systems. Commander Harley's dissertation advisors are distinguished Professor Tom McEachin and Professor Murali Tomala from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Due to out-of-country travel, Professor Tamala is unable to attend today. Commander Harley's research addressed the design and implementation of embedded channels within modern wireless communication protocols. He proposed a novel embedding technique that leveraged the error correction capabilities of these communication systems and the methods used to adapt to changing channel conditions. Commander Harley's work has a variety of applications, including the development of covert communication channels, as well as other cybersecurity and network management functions. Professor, uh, President Rondeau, I present to you Commander Harley. He has completed all requirements prescribed by the faculty and is recommended for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical Engineering. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Will Navy Lieutenant Commander Kyle Franklin, the candidate for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Meteorology, please cross the stage. The title of Lieutenant Commander Franklin's dissertation is Variable, Spatial Variability of Evaporation Ducts and Its Impact on Electromagnetic Wave Propagation. Lieutenant Commander Franklin's dissertation advisor is Professor Ching Wang from the Department of Meteorology. Lieutenant Commander Franklin, in research sponsored by the Office of Naval Research, has developed new methods to represent variations in the evaporative duct, a feature of the marine atmosphere which bends electromagnetic waves because of large vertical changes in moisture and temperature. His results will lead to a better understanding and forecasting of the environmental processes that influence the propagation of electromagnetic signals from communications and radar systems in the marine environment. President Rondeau, I present to you Lieutenant Commander Franklin. He has completed all requirements prescribed by the faculty and is recommended for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Meteorology. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Air Force Major Benjamin Wauer in the Department of Meteorology, the candidate for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Meteorology, please cross the stage. The title of Major Wauer's dissertation is Optical Turbulence in the Coastal Marine Environment and its Impact on High Energy Laser Weapon Performance. Major Wauer's dissertation advisor is Dr. Ching Wang from the Department of Meteorology. Major Wauer, in research sponsored by the Directed Energy Joint Transition Office and the Office of Naval Research, investigated the impact of optical turbulence in the marine atmosphere boundary layer on high energy laser weapons. He developed innovative tactical decision aids for operators that incorporate local variations in the coastal marine environment that are crucial to the lethality of the weapon systems. His research will improve current and future joint operations in the coastal environments. President Rondeau, I present to you Major Wauer. He has completed all requirements prescribed by the faculty and is recommended for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Meteorology. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you 
the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities there unto pertaining. Will Ms. Bonnie Worth Johnson in the Department of Systems Engineering, the candidate for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Systems Engineering, please cross the stage. The title of Ms. Johnson's dissertation is A Framework for Engineered Complex Adaptive Systems of Systems. Ms. Johnson's dissertation advisor is Dr. Alejandro Hernandez from the Department of Systems Engineering. Ms. Johnson's research developed a theory for a large engineering large systems of systems to involve to solve highly complex problems. In doing so, she defined the characteristics and principles for this new class of systems called complex adaptive systems and systems. Her theory uses a systems engineering approach to design and build those systems that can solve very complex problems. Ms. Johnson developed an engineering solution based on an adaptive architecture a system of distributed intelligent constituent systems with the capability to discover knowledge and predict the outcomes and effects of decisions. President Rondeau, I present to you Ms. Johnson. She has completed all requirements prescribed by the faculty and is recommended for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Systems Engineering. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Will Navy Lieutenant Jacob Thompson in the Department of Physics, the candidate for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Physics, please cross the stage. The title of Lieutenant Thompson's dissertation is Critical Scaling and Structure at the Yielding Transition in Granular Media. Lieutenant Johnson's dissertation advisor is Dr. Abram Clark from the Department of Physics. Lieutenant Thompson's research used computer simulations and theoretical analysis to study why particulate materials, such as grains, foams, emulsions, and colloids, begin to flow or yield under external shear forces. Current theories of yielding in these materials are known to be incomplete, so predicting or engineering the behavior near the point when such materials yield is notoriously difficult. His research employed the physics of phase transitions to help understand why the existing theories fail, as well as how to correct them. This thesis is relevant to phenomena as diverse as impact resistance, geological fault interface behavior, soil liquefaction, avalanches, sediment transport, and landslides. President Rondeau, I present to you Lieutenant Thompson. He has completed all requirements prescribed by the faculty and is recommended for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Physics. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights, privileges, and, responsi and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. <laughs> Will the candidate for the engineer's degree please stand and proceed to the platform. The engineer's degree is a degree that is intermediate between a master's degree and a PhD. It requires more courses than a master's degree, and the student spends more time in the thesis investigation, probing deeper into research than is typical for a master's degree. President Rondeau, I present to you this candidate. After consideration of his academic accomplishments, the Academic Council will recommend him for the degree electrical engineer. 
Upon the recommendation of the Academic Council, I will, by the authority vested in me, confer upon you the, the, the degree electrical engineer as specified with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Also receiving a Master of Science in Electrical Engineering, the recipient of the John McReynolds Wozencraft Electrical and Computer Engineering Academic Honor Award and graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Sean Kennedy, United States Navy. Will the candidates for the degrees Master of Arts, Master of Science, Executive Master of Business Administration, and Master of Business Administration please stand? President Rondeau, I present to you these candidates. After consideration of their academic accomplishments, the Academic Council will recommend them for the degree Master of Arts, Master of Science, Executive Master of Business Administration, and Master of Business Administration as specified. Upon the recommendation of the Academic Council, I will, by the authority vested in me, confer upon you the degree Master of Arts, Master of Science, Executive Master of Business Administration, and Master of Business Administration as specified with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Will the first row of candidates please proceed to the platform? Remaining candidates, please be seated. Of this quarter's total 280 graduating class, 34 have also earned their command and staff diploma from the Joint Professional Military Education Program sponsored by the Naval War College. Executive Master of Business Administration, Lieutenant Commander Michael Bailey, United States Navy. <laughs> Commander Bonnie Bauer, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Aaron Falstad, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Shauna Marie Gaynor, United States Navy. <laughs> Commander Dirk Heron, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Ian Lopez, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Kevin Mazela, United States Navy. Master of Business Administration, Mr. Robert Sweeney, Naval Postgraduate School. <laughs> Lieutenant Laura Wright, United States Navy. <laughs> Ms. Amanda Goddard Bennett, United States Navy. <laughs> Major Daniel Brennis, United States Marine Corps. Commander Jason Morarend, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Brittany Nelms, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Joshua Nunn, United States Navy. The recipient of the Naval Postgraduate School Outstanding Academic Achievement Award for Department of Defense student and graduating with distinction, Ms. Andrea Lynn Coleman, Department of the Navy. <laughs> Mr. Alejandro Cuevas, Department of the Navy. <laughs> Mr. Amos Horst, Department of the Navy. Ms. Cheryl Murphy Sweet, Department of the Navy. <laughs> Mr. Edward Patrick O'Donnell, Department of the Navy. <laughs> Mr. Vinaj Zakaria, Department of the Navy. <laughs> Mr. 
Master of Science in Program Management, Mr. Angel Acevedo, Department of the Army. Mr. Jason Fetty, Department of the Army. Ms. Carolyn Farmer, Department of the Army. Ms. Nicole Franning, Department of the Army. Ms. Patricia Gogatz, Department of the Army. Mr. Douglas Gorham, Department of the Army. Mr. John Hauser, Department of the Army. Mr. Nathan Hesslink, Department of the Army. Mr. Nathan Jordan, Department of the Army. Mr. Joel Coppinger, Department of the Army. Graduating with distinction, Ms. Jamie Minton, Department of the Army. Mr. Kevin May, Department of the Navy. Mr. Nigel Rayner, Department of the Army. Mrs. Megan Shoemate, Department of the Army. Mr. Robert Warren, Department of the Navy. Mr. Brandon Williams, Department of the Army. Master of Science in Electrical Engineering, Captain Tony Allen, Jr., United States Marine Corps. Captain John Domert, United States Marine Corps. Captain David Funai, United States Marine Corps. Major Jared Larson, United States Marine Corps. Captain Caliph Lebrun, United States Marine Corps. Graduating with distinction, Captain Alexander Miyakawa, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant A. Tor Albuquerque, Brazilian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Jose Alberto Herrera, United States Navy. The recipient of the Rear Admiral Merrill W. Ruck Leadership Award and graduating with an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant Vikram Kanth, United States Navy. <laughs> graduating with distinction and an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant James Long, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Stephanie Pendino, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Jonathan Puckett, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Richard Schroyer, United States Navy. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Major Ben Muwe Bay, Republic of Singapore Air Force. Major Zhao Lin Chen, Republic of Singapore Air Force. <laughs> Master of Science in Engineering Science, Electrical Engineering, Major Asaf Berger, Israeli Army. <laughs> Major Joshua Campbell, United States Army. Master of Science in Physics, the recipient of the Naval Sea Systems Command Award for Excellence in Combat Systems, graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Bruce Battison, United States Navy. Bruce. 
Master of Science in Combat Systems Technology, Major G. Ren Kui, Republic of Singapore Air Force. <laughs> Master of Science in Engineering Acoustics, graduating with an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant Commander Jae-Yoon Park, Republic of Q uh, Korea Navy. Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Lieutenant Joshua James Sale, United States Navy. <laughs> Master of Arts in Security Studies, Middle East, South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, Major Jeffrey Shamasco, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Michelle Elhart, United States Navy. Lieutenant Benjamin Hoover, United States Navy. The recipient of the Air Force Association Award for Outstanding U.S. Air Force Student, Major Brian Dunn, United States Air Force. Captain Daryl Moyers, United States Air Force. Major Julie Rollison, United States Air Force. <laughs> Master of Arts in Security Studies, Far East, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific, Lieutenant Sean Newman, United States Navy. <laughs> the recipient of the Outstanding United States Air Force Graduate Award, Department of National Security Affairs, Captain Grace Park, United States Air Force. Graduating with distinction, Major Brandon Horry, United States Air Force. <laughs> Master of Arts in Security Studies, Western Hemisphere, and the recipient of the Naval Postgraduate School Superior Service Award, Lieutenant Commander Shamir Branch, United States Navy. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander John Fabros, United States Navy. Lieutenant Austin Roney, United States Navy. Major Maximilian Hinton, United States Air Force. Master of Arts in Security Studies, Europe and Eurasia, Lieutenant <laughs> Levi Beard, United States Navy. The recipient of the Louis D. Liskin Award for Excellence in Regional Security Studies with an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant Brandon Davis, United States Navy. <laughs> Captain Kira Carpenter, United States Air Force. Major Derek McCloy, United States Air Force. Master of Arts in Security Studies, Strategic Studies, Major Frank Kerbison, United States Army. <laughs> Master of Arts in Security Studies, Homeland Security and Defense, Lieutenant David Tate, United States <laughs> Navy. Master of Arts in Security Studies, Combating Terrorism, Policy and Strategy, Lieutenant Krzysztof Pankowski, Polish Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Gustavo Santos Garcia, Mexican Navy. <laughs> the recipient of the International Student Award for Excellence in Regional or Security Studies, Major De Dennis uh, Kakande, Uganda Intelligence Service. The, the recipient of the International Student Award for Excellence in Regional or Security Studies, Assistant Superintendent of Police, Krishna Kumar Rajaram, Mauritius Police Force.
Master of Arts in Security Studies, Homeland Security and Defense, Lieutenant Joshua Gilbert, United States Coast Guard, North Carolina. <laughs> Colonel Kevin McMahon, Washington National Guard. <laughs> Ms. Svetlana Angert, Homeland Security Investigations, Washington, D.C. Battalion Chief Christopher Barney, Portland Fire and Rescue, Oregon. <laughs> Dr. Timothy Borden, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Illinois. <laughs> Deputy Chief Martin Braun, Fire Department, City of New York. Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Matthew Seibert, United States Secret Service, Colorado. <laughs> Mr. John Dragseth, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Virginia. <laughs> Mr. Robert Duncan III, Federal Law Enforcement Training Centers, New Mexico. Mr. Ryan Ford, Philadelphia Office of Emergency Management. <laughs> Ms. Cynthia Holmes, New Mexico Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. <laughs> Lieutenant Nicholas King, California Highway Patrol. <laughs> Chief Anna Lolly. Elgin Police Department, Illinois. <laughs> Patrol Deputy Harley Leonard, Williamson County Sheriff's Office, Tennessee, and Van Helsing. <laughs> the recipient of the Curtis H. Butch Straub Achievement Award and graduating with distinction, Battalion Chief Jason Lyon, Billings Fire Department, Montana. <laughs> Ms. Caitlin Mason, North Carolina Regional Intelligence Center. Ms. Paula Maxson, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, Texas. <laughs> Ms. Emily Jane McLaughlin, Arlington County Public Safety and Emergency Management, Virginia. <laughs> Graduating with an outstanding thesis, Assistant to the Special Agent in Charge, Dion Neely, United States Secret Service, Georgia. Lieutenant Colonel Mark Poland, Loudoun County Sheriff's Office, Virginia. <laughs> Mr. Matthew Porcher, City of Austin, Texas. <laughs> Deputy Chief Kenneth Pravitz, Virginia Beach Fire Department. <laughs> Captain David Sabat. Howard County Fire and Rescue, Maryland. <laughs> Mr. Octavio Sines, Texas Department of Transportation. <laughs> Lieutenant Ian Troxel, California Highway Patrol. <laughs> Mr. Zachary Ziegler, Transportation Security Administration, Maryland. Master of Science in Systems Engineering, Major Peter James Marbach, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Mr. Joshua Peter Gould, Redstone Test Center's Aviation Flight Test Directorate. 
Mr. Mark Anthony Kotwicki II, U.S. Army Futures Command, Combat, uh, Combat Capabilities Development Command, Ground Vehicle Systems Center, Systems Engineering Director. <laughs> Mr. Matthew Ryan Luke, Naval Undersea Warfare Center Division, Newport. Major Cheng Kian Lee, Singapore Army. The recipient of the Naval Postgraduate School Outstanding Academic Achievement Award for international students graduating with distinction, Major Kang Hao Tan, Republic of Singapore, Air Force. Major Jun Xian Jeremy Yi, Singapore Army. Master of Science in Engineering Systems, Captain Jian Ming Chu, Singapore Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Michael Thomas Miniman, United States Navy. <laughs> the recipient of the Meyer Award for Outstanding Student in Systems Engineering via Distance Learning, Ms. Robin Elizabeth Langston, Missile Defense Agency. Mr. Michael Nathan O'Neill, Missile Defense Agency. <laughs> Ms. Virginia Wyatt Perkins, Missile Defense Agency. <laughs> Mrs. Kayla Seymour, U.S. Army Combat Capabilities Development Command, Aviation and Missile Center. Master of Science in Systems Engineering Management, Mr. Jonas Benjamin Brown, Naval Sea Systems Command. <laughs> Mr. Lars Matthew Brown, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Philadelphia Division. <laughs> Ms. Carol Buckin Davis, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Port Wainimi Division, Virginia Beach Detachment. Mr. Darren Darrell Finklia, Naval Facilities Engineering and Expeditionary Warfare Center. <laughs> Mr. Timothy Gramp, Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific. <laughs> Mr. Adam James McCann, Naval Info Information Warfare Center Atlantic. Graduating with an outstanding thesis, Mr. Christopher John Peterson, Naval Facilities, Engineering and Expeditionary Warfare Center. The recipient of the Meyer Award for Outstanding Student in Systems Engineering via Distance Learning, Mr. Hugh William Pollard, Marine Corps Tactical Systems Support Activity. Ms. Erin Thompson. Marine Corps Systems Command. Mr. Mark Troop, Naval Information Warfare Center, Atlantic. Mr. Christopher Wilhelm, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Indian Head, Explosive Ordnance Disposal Technology Division. Master of Science in Computer Science, the recipient of the Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper Award for Computer Science, Major Ryan Patrick Keller, United States Marine Corps. Well done. Major Teal Adele Peterson, United States Marine Corps. Mr. Alexander Hart, Scholarship for Service. Mr. Terrence, let me start over. With an outstanding thesis, Mr. Terrence Kvitschko, Scholarship for Service. Ms. Alexis Rogers, Scholarship for Service. Ms. 
Mr. C. Young Ronald C. Singapore Technologies Engineering. Mr. Ronghua Shi, Singapore Technologies Engineering. Mr. Ryan Sowers, Scholarship for Service. Master of Science in Modeling, Virtual Environments, and Simulation, Major Donald Jason Frisco, United States Army. Graduating with distinction and with an outstanding thesis, Major John Michael Furr, United States Army. Mr. Hua Wan Lian, Singapore Technologies Engineering. Master of Science in Applied Cyber Operations, Chief Petty Officer Wesley Glenn Boffman, United States Navy. Chief Petty Officer Fernando Maniego, United States Navy. Master of Science in Information Systems Technology Management, also graduating with a master's degree in Business Administration and graduating with distinction, Captain Peter James Dessler, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> also with a master's, of business uh, master's degree of Business Administration, Major Kyle Vincent Ellis, United States Marine Corps. Also with a Master of, business, uh, 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 Master of Business Administration degree and with an outstanding thesis, Captain Michael Thomas Franco, United States Marine Corps. Also with a dual degree in Business Administration and the recipient of the Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper Information Systems and Technology uh, recipient, Major Jacob Paul Jones, United States Marine Corps. Major Alan Vincent Pollard, Jr., United States Marine Corps. Major Christopher Adam Rodney, United States Marine Corps. Graduating with distinction, Major Aaron Rosenblatt, United States Marine Corps. Also with a Master of Business Administration and the recipient of the Marine Corps Association Superior Service Award for Outstanding U.S. Marine Student and with an outstanding thesis, Captain Brandon Schofield, United States Marine Corps. Also with a uh, Master of Business Administration and with an outstanding thesis, Captain Stephen Gerald Spada, United States Marine Corps. Also with an MBA, Captain Scott Wood, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Captain Abdul Karim Rashed El Jaber, Bahrain Defense Force. Chief Warrant Officer for Vincent Mosley, United States Army. Master of Science in Network Operations and Technology, Lieutenant Commander Santosh Shivashankar, United States Navy. <laughs> Master of Human Systems Integration, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan David Shafsma, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Matthew Cody Nicholson, United States Navy. <laughs> Mr. Dennis Feliciano, Air Force Material Command. <laughs> Master of Science in Human Systems Integration, Lieutenant Commander Brendan Andrew Blaine, United States Coast Guard. The Master of Science in Operations Research, 
the recipient of the Surface Navy Association's Award for Excellence in Surface Warfare Research and with an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant Benjamin David Garbeck, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Alejandro Gonzalez, United States Navy. Also receiving a Master of Science in Applied Mathematics, the recipient of the Monterey Council Navy League Award for Highest Academic Achievement and the Chief of Naval, uh, Naval Operations Award for Excellence in Operations Research, graduating with distinction and with an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant Nikos uh, Leonderides Mena, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Megan Christine Mitleider, United States Navy. The recipient of the Surface Navy Association's Award for Excellence in Surface Warfare Research, Lieutenant Mansfield Christian Murph, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Marvin Pacheco Salonga, United States Navy. Lieutenant William Alfred Vega, United States Navy. The recipient of the Monterey County Navy League Award for Highest Academic Achievement and the Military Operations Research Society Stephen A. Tisdale Graduate Research Award with an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant Commander Jeffrey Eugene Good, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander David Anthony Medici, United States Navy. <laughs> Master of Systems Analysis, Major Albert Bellamy, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Corey Lee Perez, United States Navy. Lieutenant Stephen Corbin, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Robert Jessup Squires, United States Navy. <laughs> the Master of Science in Information Strategy and Political Warfare, Major Benjamin William Stegman, United States Army. Master of Science in Space Systems Operations, Lieutenant Commander Laura Grace Anderson, United States Navy. Also receiving a Master of Science in Engineering Science, Aerospace Engineering, with an outstanding thesis, Lieutenant Commander Greg Bischoff, United States Navy. Please join me in giving all our graduates a well-deserved round of applause. Please remain standing or stand. Uh, Chaplain Geralmo, Commander United States Navy, will now give the benediction. Let us pray. Our God of grace and mercy, you inspire all who trust you with the encouraging words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. May these graduates endeavor as leaders to pursue excellence in all their work, granting them continued success in the days ahead. May the light of your Son and the life of your Spirit bless us now with renewed confidence and peace. Work in us and through us that which is pleasing in your sight. We bless your name now and forever. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's graduation ceremony. On behalf of the President, Provost, and all of us at the Naval Postgraduate School, I'd like to once again thank you for being here today. We offer our sincere appreciation to the Naval Postgraduate School Color Guard and the Del Monte Brass. Please remain clear of the aisles until the platform party and faculty have departed. President Rondeau and Provost Lehrman cordially invite graduates, faculty, and guests to a reception in honor of the graduates in the Barbara McNitt Ballroom of Herman Hall immediately following the ceremony. Maestro. <laughs> Thank you.